Cubs take the series from the Mariners. Let's roll. You are Locked On Cubs, your daily Chicago Cubs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On Cubs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day alongside Sam Olber, I'm Matt Cozy. Sam and I are lifelong fans taking our passion into discussion with you on all things Cubs. Thank you for being part of the show and making Lockdown Cubs your first listen today. And the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day, like the video, and comment anything below. Please be with you on a Monday episode whenever and wherever you may be listening. And we're presented by eBay Motors. From brakes to exhaust kits and beyond, eBay Motors has over 122 million parts to keep your ride or die alive with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to bring home that big win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Cubs take the series from the Mariners and are now 9-6 and six on the season, 3-0 and oh on Sundays, which helps our recording moods for Monday episodes. Close games throughout the weekend. 4-2 loss Friday, 4-1 win Saturday, and 3-2 win Sunday. Northsiders exit the Pacific Northwest with a series victory thanks to strong pitching, the old edge-of-your-seat bullpen, which we'll get to later, and Michael Bush. Sam, I'm excited to get your thoughts as we open another great week of shows. Yeah, thanks for being on. Uh, this is a... Uh, thanks for having me. This is... a. Uh, a very fun show because you know, Packed. you know, I love, there's nothing more that I love. And I think you're similar, by the way, especially with your coaching background, nothing more than I love than a close, low scoring win. It just, it, it feels the best. Yeah. It's uh, really but, good. But to me, we have to start the show with Michael Bush, rookie of the year, favorite Michael Bush, all-star uh, starter favorite at first base, you know, when Bush first got here, you know, I think we both we both understood the move. The move was, hey, we're not going to spend a ton of money, but we need to find a way to fill first base. We need to find a way to get some left-handed power in the lineup. This was the perfect candidate. The, the Dodgers didn't have much leverage because everybody in the league knew, hey, there's nowhere for you to play him. There just isn't. And early in the year, the early returns with Bur with Bush were good. Uh, we talked about his process. He wasn't getting a ton of results, but even on this very show, we talked about his process. We did the classic. If he keeps doing the same thing, results are going to happen. Well, he kept doing the same thing, and the results are happening. Four straight games with a homer. The first Cubs rookie to do that. Literally, this is literal uh, since Teddy Roosevelt was in town, man. Uh, 1901, and that's and it's really that's just when they started recording the stats. No one right. We, we, it may have never happened. Yeah, probably hasn't happened. Uh, and and it, the eye test backs it up. The at-bats are good. The swing decisions are good. The quality of contact's really good. It has been really refreshing to watch him. And to be, <clears throat> to be honest with you, this weekend, as you mentioned, low scoring, he's yeah. really the only guy that hit all weekend consistently. I guess technically Suzuki had, had a decent game. Oh, but he's that's true. He's swinging at everything, really. We'll get to him in a moment. But yeah. Bush, um, best Cubs hitter right now by, by a wide margin. It's awesome to watch. And look, he's a rookie, even though he's an older rookie. He'll go through growing pains. League's going to adjust. He'll adjust back. But the Cubs might have something here. I I kind of coined this Bush is a dude phrase. Yes. And then when, when he hit a home run on Sunday that actually, you know, almost landed uh, uh, at the University of Washington. <laughs> right, right. 437-foot right. Uh, uh, homer. I, I tweeted, Michael Bush is that dude. Oh, so a little bit of a variety there. Yeah, I mean, because he he was. He was the best player on the field this weekend. And shout out to the guy who's supposed to be the best player on the field, Julio Rodriguez, that got picked off as a pitch runner to end this ball game. Matthew? Yo, it was crazy this weekend, these games. Uh, you know, Saturday and Sunday, highly contested. Friday, not really. The score's a little bit of deceiving. Weird Although, game. really, Friday, Sam, came down to a few pitches. A few pitches. Uh, well, that was the fourth inning, I do believe. Yeah, third uh, and the fourth. He hit Urias, and then he made some – and then in the fourth, he, 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 we'll get – yeah, he, he wasn't good. Uh, but Michael Bush currently slashing 327, 393, 694, 
five uh, Jacksons, as we say, three doubles, 11 runs batted in. And he picked up the Cubs badly this weekend because, as you hinted, Hap 04, 0 for the weekend, 0 for 11. Morel, Morel 0 for the weekend, 0 for 12. That's uh, what is that? 0 for 23. 23. And Bellinger, 1 for, 1 11. for 11. And the one hit, I if I remember correctly, uh, had an exit velo lower than my driving speed on 59. This weekend. So Cubs. So the offense oh, cooled man. down. That was funny. And despite that, Michael Bush has heated up. Say has been pretty level, although his swing decisions look look susceptible. A little weird. Hap, I'm not worried about. A lot of lot of pitches this weekend, a lot of half at bats. Made 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 a couple hard outs. Morell's chase has increased. Yeah, I'm not I worried. I wonder about, about that. And Bellinger looks off. Yeah. He's not staying back in his swing. He keeps leaning forward in his swing and hits these dribblers to the right side. I mean, literally, he had slow grounders to the right side. Some of them don't even get past the pitcher. Um, but what a story Michael Bush is, especially at a time where the team needed to be picked up. And they're absolute moonshots. Yeah. It's not going in the first row. He hits the ball hard. Yeah, and and I think you know. I actually I don't know if you saw this or not, but I I had a tweet um, that that that's actually going to hit about a thousand likes probably by in the next twenty five minutes. Um, and it was exactly what you just mentioned. Um, yeah. Ian Ian half this weekend zero for eleven. Bellinger one for eleven. Morell zero for twelve. Cubs two and one. And that's they won the aw- series, right? That's awesome. Winning when you aren't at your best. Yeah, uh, that's that's it, man. Because you know, baseball. I think one thing about baseball is sometimes it could be a boring game because to me, baseball is so unpredictably predictable in the sense that, like, mm-hmm. you just know at some point we know that this offense is going to have some unbelievable highs and some unbelievable lows. It's just how it works. And when you're able to steal wins when you're struggling, it's just the best thing in the world because you know you're gonna, you know, in a couple of couple of days, maybe it'll be when they come home against the Marlins, they're gonna have a couple double digit run games, and those, these wins are gonna come. So when you're able to, and and Sunday was a steal when you're able to steal totally steal a game like that, it feels really really good. So it's positive vibes. But Matt, one of the reasons they were able to steal the game was that after having a three run lead in the middle of the game. Um, Javier Saad, who was awesome again, by the way, uh, tremendous yeah. shout out to him. I know he gave up that two run homer, but he did. He, he's done. He's been a godsend this year so far. He's been great. Um, but but one of the reasons it felt like a steal, Matthew, was was another awful effort from from Hector Neris and company. Yeah, you know, despite cold offense this weekend, the bullpen really is still above the fold on Cubs issues right now. Because uh, you had Assad pitch well, you had Imanaga pitch well, mm-hmm. and really it is the the bullpen. And Almonte has done a, a lot better. Yeah. Uh, Lighter has been magnificent. Alzali slightly better. Smiley doing well. Yeah. Haven't seen Little since last Monday's outing. That's that's curious. And uh, you know also you have Palencia now Thompson in there. Yeah. But he Hector Neris yeah. is really struggling. Entered the game in the eighth Sunday and immediately walked two batters. I went to the bathroom and came back, two guys on. How does that happen? Why, when he comes in, is everything so rattled and everything shaky? His outings right now resemble freshman baseball. (laughs) A guy comes in, two walks, two guys on, game changes. That That's what happens at the lower levels. Not the major leagues, man. He got out of a bases loaded jam with a double play grounder. Awesome. Okay. Lucky. Awesome. But he could have very well lost the game. And I, I know that didn't happen in reality. But, folks, Neris in five innings so far has allowed six hits and six walks. Half of those walks were – we're in this last game. <laughs> and and what's the the silver lining? At least with Almonte, we picked out a few 
from the eye test and the underlying stats and maybe spin rate and velo, nothing from Naris. Nothing. No, 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 no. And he misses not only he doesn't miss close, he misses badly, especially the lefties. <laughs> this brother can't pitch the lefties. <laughs> he can't. He can't throw the lefties, dude. Nine M's for this. We did an emergency episode in January on a Saturday morning for this. He's horrible. Um, I just, hope he doesn't pitch all Arizona series, man. Go Cubs. First of all. He shouldn't pitch all Arizona series. And Matt's being humble, by the way. After Naris's first outing, I got a text that said, I don't really like the way Naris looks at all for Matt. Yeah. Um, he really has carried it over from spring. Right. So let's talk about it a little bit um, before we before we had to break. So today was just all arm side misses to lefties. All arm side. Arm oh, side misses. Constant. Uh, velocity was a little bit better today, but overall hasn't been great. Um, the splitter looks flat. The, what I'll say with Naris, so I actually, when El Monte was struggling, and he was not good on Sunday once again, but I think he's at least good enough to get some middle leverage trust. Mm-hmm. What I'm concerned about with Naris, so Naris hit, and JD says said this as well, but Naris really relies on Chase, and it is hard to get Chase when you're down on the count two zero three one. Um, and so you know this is a guy that has a a pretty good track record of being very good. Now he's had some bad years, and right now, unfortunately, the numbers that he has the the underlying numbers are very similar to what they were during those bad years. But it's just been a five, five six outings. Hopefully, you can figure it out. But this is somebody last year that was one of the best relievers in baseball. He's pitched in some of the literally the biggest games you could pitch in World Series games. Mm-hmm. So you know I don't know what it is. Um, Tommy Hadovy's on the clock here. They have to tr- try and figure out a way to get him right because at least until Julian Merriweather is back, which will not probably be until you know maybe June, mid June. I, I am not. I don't see a path to the cup. Like Hector Neris has to be good. Like I just don't think. I, I don't know if they're going to be able to have success because Alzali I- had a positive outing on Sunday. That was good to see. Right. Um, and and Saturday, yeah, and Saturday was better as well. Um, and Leiter Jr. has been great, but he, again, he is he is a specialist, but he's been awesome. Mm-hmm. I think Drew Smiley's probably going to start having, especially when when Tyone comes back and he doesn't have to piggyback as much with Ben Brown, I think he's going to start getting some more leverage. Okay. But at the end of the day, you pay $9 million for this guy, and he's going to get every chance he can to figure it out. It's kind of eerily similar to Michael Fulmer in April last year. All right. Um, it does, it, and, and that's not good uh, because Michael Fulmer, he's when he started to figure it out, he lost his job. He was pitching in sixth mm-hmm. and seventh and fifth innings. But I, I you know, th- the issues with Naris are so much we don't have enough time. Uh, today was command. Before that, it was very hard contact, which he's not supposed to really give up. Um, hopefully, he could build on this. I guess the point I'm trying to make is you're kind of stuck with it. And I think if the Cubs are going to have success in their bullpen, he's just going to have to figure it out. You probably won't see him until Wednesday at the earliest. Keegan Thompson made his season debut Friday, posted two scoreless after getting swapped out with Jose Quas earlier that day. Um, quite a story, actually, for Keegan Thompson, who uh, really cratered last May, especially in Houston, um, and was demoted one day later, really to never be seen again until a cameo uh, last September, late in the year. Uh, and then Saturday's game, Sam, a couple final notes here. Second yeah. one, uh, Imanaga, five and a third, five hits, one run. It was unearned, two walks, four strikeouts. Yeah. And uh, Suzuki and Amaya also homered in addition to um, Bush. Yeah, I didn't think I didn't think Imanaga was was as good as his first two starts, but really good to see him grind through it. Yeah, only sixty percent strikes. Yeah, um, and yeah, I love, and I'm curious with Imanaga, Sam, and we could maybe highlight it as the week moves along. Even though we have some late games that we're going to preview coming up next, but is Imanaga going to start Thursday or Friday? Are they going to keep pitching him every sixth day, or is this the first time he's going to pitch? On the fifth day, do we see him this Thursday, yeah. or do we not see him till Friday? And conveniently, the we could just see him till Friday. 
Chris which Tyone. likely means that Jamison Tyone yep. would lead off the Marlins series. The Cubs did announce over the weekend that he will return to the Cubs rotation this week. So um, my guess is that through April and May, he's going to pitch every sixth day. Yep. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, f- any final thoughts on Jordan Wick, Sam, who four walks and a hit batsman on Friday? Yeah, you, well, you said it. You said it perfectly. That actually was a game the Cubs could have won 2 1, 2 0. Yeah. He, he, Jordan Wick just beat himself, just real quick. Um, he, needs to, he needs to throw his change up more. He gets one, two to Urias. And I understand maybe Urias has good numbers against the change up, but I always believe if I have a strength, that's my strength. And I'm not going to go off of that because of another right, player. Right. Sim. Then he gets, he walks the lead off hitter, throws a wild pitch on a slider, another walk. And then the big point is he's one, two to uh, JP Crawford with Julio Rodriguez on deck and everybody in the Mariners lineup struggling. So, uh, and, and he just nibbled, 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 walks him. Then gets beat, not on his best pitch uh, to Rodriguez, and that was really it. So uh, okay. we'll learn from that. Still getting a lot of whiffs, but just just that smart pitching and poor execution from him. Uh, I thought on on Friday, the Cubs head to Phoenix to play the Diamondbacks, and we're going to preview that series coming up next. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your car alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one car, you always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easier to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your car alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Today's episode is also brought to you by Monopoly Go. Yes. We've all been there, either as a player or a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low. Not sure you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies and friends. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball and change other players' rent for your iconic prop. Properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put on your game face, and download Monopoly Go, now free on the Apple or Google Play Store. The Cubs play the Diamondbacks at 8.40 p.m. Central on Monday, and you can hear every pitch of the Cubs hometown broadcast on Sirius XM by searching Cubs on the SXM app. Cubs travel to Phoenix for a three-game set with the Diamondbacks. First pitch times, 8.40, 8.40, and 2.40. Ben Brown is going to oppose Merrill Kelly, Kyle Hendricks, and Tommy Henry, a lefty. Cubs haven't faced a lefty in a while. And Jordan Wicks against Brandon Fatt. Cubs will likely be underdogs in all three contests. And Sam, let's get into the series and, and some series goals before the Cubs finally head back to the north side Thursday. Yeah, you know, facing Merrill Kelly will be interesting because he has a similar – his best pitch is the same best pitch that Luis Castillo had, which you just saw Sunday. Mm -hmm. So that might benefit you, the changeup. I Um, hope so. And Castillo, I mean, he he had some good success. Was it six innings, three earned? He wasn't great, wasn't bad. Yeah. Uh, You know, as far as goals go, I mean, I think you'd like to see Kyle Hendricks have some sort of positive outing. Right. Um, I'm not overly confident about that. No, but you know, I gotta tell you, Matt, winning this series, especially in the fashion that you did, if you could just find a way to get out of there with one and have a four and five West Coast trip, that's, that's not what I was that's not the end of the world. And you know, yeah. I was talking to my dad on Saturday because I, you know, I my dad sometimes will help me with just how to look at a season because I think we're all guilty, especially me more so than you, 
of, of the social media and the odds and all this stuff. And so I said, I said to him, I said, Dad, you know, I'm starting to get a little frustrated. The Brewers and Pirates, they just don't lose. The yeah. Brewer, the Brewers, two out of three against Baltimore. And Phil, uh, the Pirates, two out of three against Philly. Even though if we're 10 and 8, it feels like – and he, he interrupted me. He goes, Sam, you don't even pay attention to that stuff until Memorial Day. Just okay. get your, just get your, just do what you need to do and see what's going to happen Memorial Day. And I, I do think those teams, especially Milwaukee's offense, will fade. So you know, if you come out of this ten and eight, you got to remember, Matt, no steel, uh, no Tyone, no Merriweather. And and by the way, like as good as the offense has been, your what, what performances besides Michael Bush have you gotten where you go, that's that's not going to be able to last. Hap hasn't been good. His quality of contact, even when he was pl- hitting well, wasn't great. He's just seen a lot of pitches. Suzuki's been exactly what we expected to be. He needs to be a fixture on this offense, and he has so far. Hopefully, he can keep it up. Bellinger has been atrocious. It only goes up from there. Horner's been bad. Only goes up from there. morell has been what we expected. So they, they, it's not like like this is that them surviving and winning these games. They've won nine out of fifteen. That's a sixty percent. Um, yeah, it's really percentage. good. Yeah. What is that like? If, if you do that over the course, I of think year, it's ninety nine game wins. Yeah, exactly. So the yeah, fact yeah. that they're the fact that they're <laughs> doing this is you know, with, with the way they're playing. Neris has been bad. Like this is good stuff right now. And, yeah, yeah. And and I'm glad that they're there. So you know, I, I have a little bit of you know, uh, um, you know, not great memories from last September in Arizona. So I'd right. like to win. I'd like to win one or two just to. I really don't enjoy it. It's a, and there's so many great Cub fans there. So you'd like to oh, see them. So many thousands. And I'm excited. I'm excited to watch Ben Brown there um yeah me too i believe arizona took two out of three from st louis this weekend yes they did um so yeah i, I you know i didn't really answer any of your questions there but i just talked well, but well, no the goal the goal is to me is to win one out of three yeah i, I don't i don't really want to say it's a goal but it's like it's a fine <laughs> plateau it's a fine plateau yeah, yeah yeah i think the goal would be to win the series but if you win one you're all right you come home and you play miami and houston and 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 go from there yeah, Houston's a little bit in shambles uh, after dominating the league for the last 10 years. Uh, you know, I think this week I, I am discouraged by Hendricks in a- AZ. I think that's a bad matchup. Is he facing Henry? Yeah, that could be like a softball score. <laughs> uh, maybe like an 11 to 10 Cubs win. Uh, wouldn't that be nice to see them come out of the gate Monday? But that is the best pitcher of the three, although Brandon Fat. Um, he's a high VLO guy. Yeah. You know, we saw him last September. He impressed. Yeah. Kelly's and, good. Uh, he's been, Kelly's he's been good. pretty good to start this year too. They're a good team. They're a good team. Yeah. I, I, I don't take them lightly at all. I respect them. Uh, Tori Lavello was done outstanding. Yep. I mean, they made the world series last year. Well documented yeah. on this program for sure. Um, so yeah, let, let's see what happens in the three. We will be live. Uh, we know for sure after Monday night's game. Yeah. And then uh, we'll talk off the air about Tuesday. Yeah, maybe not Tuesday. And we'll plan for after Wednesday as well. Yeah. Uh, and can I say one more thing? Because yeah. I, 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 you know, I forgot. I, I want to give a huge shout out on the show because I've been the hardest on him. Yes. Um, to Christopher Morell's defense Saturday night. Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, his defense was amazing. And when, when you know, I don't. One game doesn't make you all of a sudden a great third baseman, but what that was was progress. Right. And what that progress does is allows Mike Talkman to get in the lineup. And even yes. though Talkman posted an over today on Sunday, he looks really good and locked in. And and, and with the way Bell, the way wow. Bellinger and Hap look, you might need him to play a little bit more. Well, and not only does it open up a spot for Talkman, which by the way, Nick Madrigal hasn't played um, since Teddy Roosevelt was in. <laughs> <laughs> Panama Canal, baby. <laughs> great, you know, people forever, forget, man. you know, that's a great trivia question. The fourth guy on Mount Rushmore. Um, but it also Morell at third consistently lets you use your imagination. Yes. And lets you make fake trades in your head in July. You're sitting by the pool. The Cubs are in first. Mm. They strike a deal to get a certain first baseman slash DH out of Queens. Yeah. They strike a deal to get a certain closer from from the ALE, and, and you're saying that because now if Morell's the third, the DH is open for a Michael Bush. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yes. And, exactly. and can I just I just say one more thing before we hit break? No, please. It's a talk program. When we come on here and say Bellinger looks bad, that doesn't mean we think he's going to be bad the whole year. 
I wouldn't think so. It's just that we He's bad currently. This is a day-to-day talk show, and right now he hasn't hit a ball hard since Jimmy Carter, you know? So uh, <laughs> it's just one of those things. I mean, I posted his exit velo. So was, I'm not even going to go there. You nailed the joke. So. All right, coming up next, we're going to start working in a, th- a th- third segment for Mondays just okay. to look around the NL Central. Yeah, Who's I already playing who I this to. week? Yeah, it's my fault. We're going to do that uh, coming up next. Brand new partner here on the show, Yahoo Finance. Our show couldn't exist without the help of sponsors like Yahoo Finance. And let's get right to it. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, to pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? Well, with Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools that you need in order to help reach that financial Freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor. That's Yahoo Finance, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That is yahoofinance.com. Third segment here on a Monday, we're going to start previewing who each of the NL Central has. I mean, I Sam, I do like, though, what your dad said this weekend. And I would even just round up to June 1 because that's about 60 games in even. Yep. Don't look at the standings until 60 games in. It looks like you want to say something. No, no, no. Oh, I would say 60 games in, and and that's good. I mean, I can give you the standings if we want them. No, please. The fact is the Brewers and Pirates are off to good starts. The Cardinals are not. Cubs and Reds about the same. Uh, Maybe Cubs a notch better. Uh, Brewers play the Padres and Cardinals this week. Pirates have the Mets and Red Sox. Reds have the Mariners and Angels, or as I said on my outline, the Angles. And the Cardinals play the A's and the Brewers. That's a look at the NL Central uh, this week. Matt. Yes. I'm going to read you the lineup today that the Brewers put out there. Okay. Well, they're all hitting pretty well. Look, I get it. There's teams like the Rays every now and then. You put out a lineup, go, no way this team could be good, and they're good. Right now, the Brewers are basically the number one offense in baseball outside of maybe the Dodgers and Yankees who have like wow. eight different superstars. This was a lineup today. And granted, Christian Yelich was hurt, so so um, you, you could put him in there when he's healthy. Leading off was William Contreras. Batting second was Reese Hoskins. Fine, one, two. Batting <laughs> third is the powerless Sal Freelich. Uh, batting first was fourth was Willie Adamas. Now it gets insane. Batting fifth, 150, Gary Sanchez. Batting Sanchez. Batting sixth, Bryce Terang. Batting seventh, Joey Ortiz. Batting eighth, Joey Weimer. And batting ninth with three hits a homer and is hitting 385, Ted Will, excuse me, Blake Perkins. Oh. So look, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that that this is unsustainable. There's going to be a drop off though. But 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 it's unsustainable and there's going to be a drop off, okay? Right. So let's all take a deep breath. It's annoying. I get it. It's it but is annoying though. It, it's annoying and it's yeah. it's fair to be annoying. I'm sure Craig Council's pretty annoyed. I'm sure he's wondering, man, those playoff series that we kept losing 2-1, where was Blake Perkins when I needed him? <laughs> you know? Yeah. William Contreras looks like Johnny Bench. Where was this? Right, uh, right. Uh, you know, uh, um, um, you know, Willie Adamas is Barry Larkin. Last year, he 217 for me. Um, you know, that stuff will calm down. It will normalize. We are a better ball club than them. We will be live after Monday night's game. That's going to be about midnight central. Uh, hopefully earlier than that, but I think uh, it will be around then. It's 840, you said, right? Yes. Thank you so much for checking out this edition of Locked On Cubs. You give us 20 to 30 minutes. We'll give you all things Cubs with a laugh or two along the way. Be sure to hit subscribe on YouTube. Smash the like button for the algorithm. And leave a five-star review on Apple, Spotify, and everywhere 
you get your podcast. Hopefully it's better than last Monday. And Sam, there was breaking news as well. I think the Cubs just signed somebody. Yeah, Julio Tehran. Okay, he's now in the fold. He'll report to Des Moines. He's Sam Olber. I'm Matt Cozy. This is Locked on Cubs. There is momentum happening here.